Chantelle White has common variable immune deficiency. Her immune system is so weak, she relies on regular injections of donated plasma to fight off infections. They take out the immunoglobulins, which is the antibodies from that, and then I give it to myself. And so I get kind of the immunity of, a, of the general population. And while the mother of two has had her COVID-19 shots, doctors have no idea how much protection the vaccine actually gave her. Chantal is part of a new national study. We're trying to um, determine what's called vaccine immunogenicity, which is does the vaccine create an immune response? In Alberta, Dr. Sneha Suresh's team is studying people with inherited or intrinsic immune deficiencies. Dr. Michael Chu's team is focusing on blood cancer patients, a group especially vulnerable to COVID-19. Their disease makes them more immune suppressed initially just because it is an immune system cancer. But number two, their chemotherapy particularly targets the immune system. Early data shows just 10 to 20 percent of myeloma patients develop immunity after COVID vaccines. But Dr. Chu points out that's based on antibody levels. I'm also hoping that the T cells are actually still very functional. So even if they aren't producing antibodies, maybe those numbers are actually pessimistic. Maybe a lot more of these people are actually doing better than we think they are. The goal is to collect information and come up with strategies for immunization. So we may learn that certain populations require extra doses um, of vaccines to create a sustained immune response. Timing during cancer treatment could also be important, or vaccines could be tailored for specific groups. Chantal is donating blood, urine and saliva samples to the study, hoping to learn how to protect herself and others. I feel like this isn't the last uh, time that a new virus is going to come out. <laughs> and the more we know now, uh, the better we'll be able to handle it in the future. Sulingo, Global News.